Let's move into main topic number three. And our third main topic today gets submitted to us by Rainmaker23, who writes, A new report from Kessel Run Transmissions, who have successfully leaked tons of Star Wars-related stuff, is reporting that the previously reported on animated Rebel sequels show is being scrapped, with its story now being used for the live-action Ahsoka show. Do you think this is the right decision? What are your thoughts? Okay, thanks a lot for sending that in, Rainmaker. And yes, there is a report going around uh, from a YouTube channel that has, has nailed some stuff before about the possibility that this upcoming Ahsoka show, this live-action Ahsoka show that we had the great Rosario Dawson playing Ahsoka, which was, uh, I mean, this is coming from a guy who's never liked the Ahsoka character. Fabulous episode, fabulous iteration of that character. Uh, and now they're going to be doing Ahsoka's own show, which uh, I think a lot of people are very excited about, understandably so. But they're now saying that this is kind of cannibalizing the Rebel show. It says this, this is what comes to us from comic book movie who say, interestingly, it's suggested that scripts from the scrapped animated sequel series to Star Wars Rebels a show I really liked, by the way, are being used for the show, the Ahsoka show, with the plan reportedly for Ahsoka to lead into spinoffs like maybe an Ezra and a Thrawn show. I doubt that. But anyway, Ahsoka will be the story that the successor was supposed to be. Okay. So that's what they're saying this is. It's kind of cannibalizing uh, the previous, what was going to be a Rebels follow-up series. My first thought is... Didn't we all already know this? Was, wasn't this obvious already? Isn't this what we all assumed? Like, look, the moment Ahsoka showed up and said, after her combat said, where's your master? Where is Thrawn? As soon as she said that, I think that was a cue to all of us that, yeah, Ahsoka's getting her own series, which a lot of people suspected already. But I think it made it clear that now this Ahsoka thing was going to be pursuing the ending of the Rebel series. Of course, for those of you who may not know, Rebels ends with uh, Ahsoka and Sabine Wren getting together to go off on a search for Ezra, who disappeared with Thrawn, right? That's how Rebels ends. It ends with those two going off on a search for their friend Ezra, who was with Thrawn on Thrawn's Star Destroyer. Because they were taken into outer space by space whales. Don't even get me started on the stupid space whales. But aside from that. So I, I think at that point, it kind of became clear and obvious. This Ahsoka show is kind of going to be the spiritual follow-up to how Rebels ended. So yeah, for me personally, I completely believe the report. Because I think the report is what we were all kind of assuming anyway. I don't know about there being a spinoff Ezra show and a spinoff uh, Thrawn show. I, I don't think I don't know, and I don't think they're going to go in that direction. Anything's possible, of course, but I don't think they're going to go in that direction. But yeah, this seems to make most sense. It seems to be what they were telegraphing to us with that one Mandalorian episode. So to me, yeah, I believe the report because it's what I think we were all thinking anyway already. Rob, you hear about this. What do you think about the notion of that direction for an Ahsoka show and maybe cannibalizing some of what some of the script ideas were for a Rebels animated spinoff or sequel series? What do you think? Well, I think a lot of, of studios, you know, there's a lot of things that go into development and don't get made and then get repurposed later. I mean, famously, uh, Die Hard 2 was based on a script called, I think it was called 57 Minutes. And it wasn't a Die Hard script. Same with Die Hard with a Vengeance was based on a script called Simon Says that wasn't a Die Hard script. But in the case of Star Wars, you know, they've got that live action series that apparently they that never got made that they have all those scripts for, which which I could see being cannibalized for Boba Fett. So it makes sense to me that they would take these ideas that they developed for Rebels and are repurposing them because, I mean, I think that's actually a pretty good good thing to do. I mean, sure, they're probably gonna have to rewrite them. But it makes sense that all of this development work, work that's already been done, is repurposed and finally used. I think that's a smart uh, use of their resources, so it doesn't surprise me. And by the way, guys, I would recommend, if you want to know uh, more about Thrawn, there are, uh, not going back to the uh, Heir to the Empire 
of uh, novels that came out a long time ago. Though those are great, but the new canon era Thrawn books, uh, one one or two are better is better than the other. But if you want to do that, you should go check those out. It gives you a very different picture of Thrawn, a very very. And I'd be curious, Rob, when they do Mandalorian, or sorry, when they do the Ahsoka show. Here's the thing. Right now in Star Wars canon, there are two very different Thrawns. Like two very, very different Thrawns. Let me see if I can find this. Um, because the one Thrawn we've had in Rebels. We've had Rebels, the Rebels Thrawn, who is very much a villain, uh, who is very much like this uh, calculating, evil mastermind guy, right? Dead serious, whatever, very classy, but, you know, very evil mastermind. The other Thrawn, though, is the Thrawn that they have, that they are they say is canon, is the Thrawn we have in the books. As a matter of fact, the Thrawn novels even reference events in Rebels. As you get further into the Thrawn books, they reference the events in Rebels. But the Thrawn that they portray in the novels is very much a hero. He has a sense of honor. He has a sense of decency, not just honor. Like there's a lot of villains that have like this weird sense of honor, but the Thrawn in the books has a clear sense of decency, of loyalty, of basically he's the hero of these books, which on every villain is the hero of their own story. Yeah, but I mean, even as a reader, Thrawn's a hero. He's a good guy in these books. My point is, is that the Thrawn we get in the books that are canon is very distinct and different of an iteration from the Thrawn we get in the animated show. So my question is, when we come to Ahsoka, which Thrawn are we going to get? Because remember, Cobb Vanth, the marshal from Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 1, He's in the canon novels too, but they changed him up a bit for the live action show. So I can't help but wonder, Rob, are they going to go with the more villainous Thrawn from the animated show? Will they go with the more good guy heroic, but just on the Empire side Thrawn from the books? Or will they play with it a little bit and find a middle ground and say he, he'll he be more like an anti, he'll be more like a Loki, you know? Bad guy, but kind of good guy. Sometimes, I, I I don't know. What do you think is their best approach for this, Rob? How do you think they should approach Thrawn when they get into the Ahsoka series? Well, you know, I'm a big fan of Thrawn because I read that Thrawn trilogy. You know, I devoured it when it first came out. So good. Yeah, and I've got, I even, you know, I was even looking, Dark Horse did a um, comic adaptation of that trilogy as well that I have in hardcover book form that I was looking at not too long ago. I I think he's going to be probably a noble anti-hero because one of the things that I, I I saw like in the Mandalorian that scene with Bill Burr when they were talking you know in that base and it was that great scene where Bill Burr asks the guy about that horrible massacre of civilians and we learned a lot from that exchange about the empire and I, I think that if anything Thrawn is going to be portrayed as a guy who is noble and who has good intentions. Like he, I, he probably believes, man, he's like, you know, the empire brought order to the galaxy. And then, and, and I, he, he's probably like, I would imagine what he would be, what the empire could or should have been, as opposed to being an evil planet destroying empire. Like he'd represent what the empire could be and maybe might be if he succeeds. And uh, maybe he winds up being a very tragic figure because he was going to re remake the galaxy in his own image. And then it became the First Order and just full of douchebags. But who knows? <laughs> you know? But, but listen, seriously, guys, if you are interested, I would recommend going back and reading, uh, again, the first Thrawn book. Let me just see if I can uh, bring it up here properly. Um, the first Thrawn book in the new... Uh, the new series. It's just called Thrawn. You can right. get it on Amazon because it explains and describes how did Thrawn, it, it talks a lot about his race, the Chiss Empire. Uh, it talks about, it describes and shows us how he came to be in the Empire, his first meetings with Palpatine um, and how he advanced through the Imperial ranks. It is really interesting and good backstory. So I would recommend checking that if you get a chance. Anyway, guys, question is, what do you think? 
about all that. What do you think about them doing Thrawn, about Ahsoka cannibalizing maybe some of the Rebels things? It is a pretty efficient use of things. You don't want to let those scripts go to waste. What do you think they're going to do? Jump down into the comments section below and let us know your thoughts. All right, guys.